Hi, everybody. I, um, I'm doing a, uh, doing a little experiment here, and I'm going to be focusing on different aspects of microeconomics, working them out on the board, on this kind of clear board that you're seeing here. And this, this enables me to write things on a board like you would be seeing it in, uh, uh, on a chalkboard. And so this first one is going to be on Chapter 3, Comparative and Absolute Advantage. This is, a, this is an issue that a lot of students have problems with. You'll see on the practice questions and even on the exam. So I wanted to go over this with you. So here we've got a question that is actually taken from the practice questions. It's England and Spain producing cheese and bread. Now, what you oftentimes see is labor hours, the amount of hours used to make cheese and bread. This is per, to make one unit of, make one unit of, and then the number of units in 40 hours. So you take this number and then you times it by, in this case, four, uh, whatever it takes to get 40. 1 times 40 gets 40. 4 times 10 is 40. 4, um, um, four times 10 gets, um, is 40. 8 times 5 is 40. Now, you'll see these labor hours, and you really don't need the labor hours, so we can just cross those puppies out. And all you need to focus on is the amount of units in 40 hours. And so oftentimes, they'll, oftentimes these questions will ask you, well, what should England produce and what should Spain produce? And what you should realize is the distinction between comparative and absolute advantage. Under absolute advantage, remember that it is the, um, the amount, the most amount of things that get, can be produced in a given amount of time or the amount of time it takes, um, the, the fastest. In this case, England has an absolute advantage in both cheese and bread. So you don't really, re so you don't really know if England should be producing just cheese and bread or there should be some, tr some change, um, some trade going on. So the thing to do is to go to something called comparative. advantage. Now comparative advantage is the amount, uh, um, the amount that you're giving up to get one item of something. So what we're going to find out is who gives up the least to produce a particular item. So, so to do this we know that England has an absolute advantage in both We've got to figure out the opportunity cost for England to produce um, a unit of cheese and an opportunity cost to produce a unit of bread, and the same for Spain. And what we can do is a second table. Here's England. Here's Spain. This is one cheese, one bread. And to put these numbers in here, what you do is you make a little algebraic equation of um, these two numbers right here. So in the case of England, it will be 40C equals 10B. The equal sign means in 40 hours, England can make either um, 40 units of cheese or 10 units of, units of bread. Now, in order to get one cheese in terms of bread, what do you do? You divide by 40, and whatever you do to one side, you do to the other side. Divide by 40 gives you 1C equals 1 fourth B. And that one fourth B goes right here. And if you do it the same, if you do it for bread, it will be divided by 10, divided by 10, and this becomes 4C. 
This number is going to be in terms of the other. So it's to produce one unit of cheese, how much bread are you going to have to give up? Now this is, that's for England, this is for Spain. Buy bread. To produce one unit of cheese, you divide by 10. Divide by 10. And one unit of cheese is, and this reduce this, we always have to reduce when we're doing these types of problems, one half B. And the reciprocal, if I were to divide by five, divide by five, it's going to be 2C. Now we've got the opportunity cost for England and Spain in terms of cheese and bread. And to figure out who should do what, it is the country or person that is giving up the least in order to make that one unit. In the case of cheese, you look at it this way. In the case of cheese, it, who is giving up the least? It is England giving up the least. And in the case of bread, who's giving up the least? It is Spain. While you can have an absolute advantage in more than one good, it is impossible to have a comparative advantage in more than one good. So now we get to answer all of the questions. Who has the comparative advantage? Who should produce what? English should produce cheese and Spain should produce bread. Who should export, um, who should export cheese? England. Who should export bread? Spain. And if you export one good, you are importing the other good. So if England exports cheese, they will by definition import bread. And Spain, they export cheese, they import bread. So all questions of comparative advantage come down to making this particular table. Even if you were to see the, um, the questions on a graph, Let's see, uh, let's say this is England, and this is cheese and bread, 40, 10. You just take that number, put it in here, do this calculation. Uh, one more thing, if a country has a comparative advantage in one, absolute advantage in one good, and, and the other country has an absolute advantage in the other good, the comparative advantages will be identical. So I do believe that is it. That will help you answer any questions that you've got, he, that you've got here regarding comparative and absolute advantage and who should specialize in what. So that ends my little talk for chapter three, comparative and absolute advantage. And that's it.